Here we go, Caleb. Saddle up. We are back with episode 10. We have reached double digits of the One Trick Ponies podcast. Like as I mentioned, Caleb Galloway, my co-host. I'm Canyon Cooksley. Uh, we're in a mobile setup here. You've probably uh, noticed that right away. I am actually back home home with my parents. This is my childhood bedroom. I don't know if you can see what's behind me, but I'm pretty sure I have like pictures of when I played tackle football and like little kids baseball. And like I was a pitcher, but back then for our, our league, we didn't have an actual mound. So That's I was literally sick. like pitching off of uh, like flat ground. That's awesome. So uh yeah there's my, my pictures back there what else can you see i hopefully you can't see anything too uh, there's a there's a picture down on your shelf looks like a lot of family members maybe that's about it oh yeah no yeah yeah that's uh i got pictures of me and my fiance when we were back in high school and um and all that stuff so yeah, yeah. i'm in my i'm in my childhood bedroom this is where we're probably going to have to record uh this week's podcast and next week's um i'm i'm not going to be back in my apartment and in nebraska for an entire a little bit over a week uh i just needed a break i needed a break i needed to get away from that terrible state that state makes me want to rip my eyeballs out and jesus just why don't you just move to north carolina man hopefully down the road i i mean that's where it looks like uh all the happiness and fun is nebraska is just like Nebraska is just like you don't even want to leave your apartment. It's so miserable. I thought Iowa was miserable. But then, again, I grew up in Iowa, so I had all my friends in Iowa. And now I, like, pray for the days that I get to go back to Iowa because Nebraska is so much worse. So much worse than Iowa. And and I know you, you've never been to Iowa or Nebraska, probably, correct? Yeah, no. No shot. And as much as you want to hate on Iowa, don't go to Nebraska then. Because you, it will make Iowa look like the greatest state in the country. Nebraska, there's just nothing. If you go past Lincoln, and I have yet to go past Lincoln, go towards west. Uh, I have not gone past there. But I just know there's literally nothing there. Nebraska is – but they do have Dave's Hot Chicken. That, that, that's that's going to count for something. It's going to count for something. Me, that's keeping me in Nebraska. And unfortunately, though, it's in Omaha, so I have to drive 45 minutes to get Dave's Hot Chicken. And uh, hear me out, if I was in North Carolina, I could just probably live in the same town where there's a Dave's Hot Chicken. Yeah, see? Where did where did we go when we, we, we went there? But it, where was it at? It's about, there you it's go. About, it's about 45 minutes from where I live. But still, I can go with Caleb instead of myself. Yeah, and there's also, like, stuff to do along the way. Exactly. Not, you know... I, again, Iowa and Nebraska have no professional teams. It's just terrible state. But so this is where I will be. Uh, and we'll, I was like, hey, Caleb, you know, let's not let's not miss miss an episode. It's not like I'm taking a field trip to Atlanta like uh, like you did. So I am currently having my phone balance on some some boxes. And I don't know how the lighting is. I don't have my microphone, but I got my headphones. And I said, hey, let's just do it. So. There wasn't much to really talk about uh, with sports. Sports are kind of in a weird stage right now. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a lot going on with football. Baseball is just kind of in that mid, like not even midpoint to the season yet. No second half stories, not to the all-star game. Basketball is wrapping up, so it's, I mean, it's entertaining, but both these series – Common play blowout. So it's just kind of a boring time for me right now in sports. It's so hard to get me to watch NBA, NBA basketball. Yeah. Like I yeah. I love it. I I'll be honest, I'll be the first one to say I've not watched a single game for either one of these series. I turned on game six of the Mavericks Thunder. That's about it. Yeah. I I I, wa- I mean I I see highlights. I see all the media. Uh, I see people that I follow on social media talk about it. But again, it's just like there's so many other things I would rather do than watch NBA basketball. Would you? Would you rather? Would you rather? I think I feel like I know this answer. Would you rather go to a baseball game or watch basketball? Go to. I would rather go to any sporting event than watch basketball. Uh, but college basketball is different. 
I will say I love college basketball. And, you know, probably and – and I like college basketball because of the atmosphere and, you know, the playoff atmosphere is probably insane for, for the NBA. But I, I just don't have any, any attachment uh, to the NBA. Both of our teams are out of the playoffs. My team never makes the playoffs. My team my, – my new team, the Orlando Magic, made the playoffs, but they let me down. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like I have no interest in it. College, you know, you have March Madness where you actually make a bracket – yeah, like, that's fun. I watch that, but there's just ways to keep it entertaining. Yeah. So the NBA is on baseball. Like you said, trade rumors are starting because kind of we're getting to that middle middle point of the season where stars are yeah. being de- stopped and dealt. Vlad Guerrero Jr. is a guy to keep your eye on. He's Pete Alonzo. That, Pete Alonzo is another individual uh, to keep your eye on. I've I've seen a lot of rumors with them. I've seen Vlad potentially looking at the Giants. So Vlad to Seattle. See, yeah, I've also seen Seattle. Ah, so, God, I would love that, dude. Oh, absolutely. And I I don't think I've made it clear or said it on this podcast, but outside of the Red Sox, Seattle is so fun to watch. Just the youth and Seattle, and Baltimore. Is, Seattle is my second favorite team. It's close with the Cubs. Mm-hmm. I like the Cubs because they just have a lot of fun guys on that team. But for some reason, man, Julio Rodriguez is slowly – he's not even, like, playing tremendous this year. I just like – he reminds me of young Acuna somehow. Acuna's young, but J-Rod mm-hmm. reminds me of a younger version of him. And so yeah, I just uh, – I love yeah. that team. See, Seattle and Baltimore, I just love, the, like, the – I got to watch how I say this. I love the young talent in MLB in the MLB right now. I the, will take the young talent talent in the MLB over young talent in the NBA any day. Uh, yeah. Now football, that's a different conversation. But baseball, there's just so so many prospects are finally getting called up, getting chances. Uh, so many people are or individuals are making names for themselves. It's just a. a I would rather watch baseball right now and pay attention to baseball than any other sport that's currently happening i i agree i got like i said i don't watch a lot of uh baseball on television just i don't think a lot of people do even like diehard baseball correct it's hard to watch baseball on television but i catch myself watching highlights every night pretty much now or going through the ticker and seeing who went you know batting averages home runs i follow a page on uh instagram where it's every home run that gets hit, they post the clip. Oh, they, that's sick. I may post, send you that profile. Every home run that gets hit, they post the clip of the home run. That's sick. So uh, a couple of days ago, for like six straight nights, they probably would have posted Rafael Devers. Yes. like That is awesome. They'll post like every 20 minutes, there's another post of somebody that hit a home run. It's pretty sweet. Like if, if it's like a significant home run, They'll caption it like, this is such and such, breaks this record, or this is his first home run. This is six straight game with a home run. Like, it's just pretty cool. I mean, it keeps me up to date with who's, like, really mashing the ball. Yeah. Well, And, and then, you know, for football right now, it, it's an interesting time, but I feel like you just can't take too much away from it. Uh, a lot of it, it – what is it, like, r- rookie camp? Yeah. Rookie yeah. training camp? Rookie OTAs. OTAs. Uh, and that gets into our, our first topic that we can kind of talk about. But again, I just don't take too much away from this. You also can't really watch a lot of this. It's just a lot of media. And right now, the media is currently in the stage of hyping up every single quarterback or destroying every single quarterback. Yep. You know, I don't know how many posts I saw last week of Anthony Richardson has added so much muscle. Bryce Young has added so much muscle. And it's just like they're just constantly glazing these quarterbacks. And you can't really take much from it. You also don't know what to believe. Is it simply just an angle of the photograph? Like, yeah. filter? Are, are you editing to make him? Because you can clearly do that with nowadays technology. So football is just kind of at a standstill for me. But, but when actual training camp starts happening, um, and I know you in recent years, or you've been to a Carolina training camp, haven't you? Yes, 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 yes. Because so you hey, might need to go back and I, I would be, love uh, to be, see uh, Bryce Young and and uh, Leggett. I would God, I would love to. 
do a little uh one trick ponies excursion and do a live intake of what's going on at panthers camp because like the, yes. what's unique about panthers camp is it's open to the public for like the entirety of it mm-hmm. not a lot of teams do that i went to i don't know how it was well when was bridgewater's rookie year 2014 so i went in 2014 to the vikings um and again when you're in iowa you don't have many options to go to uh, at the time i just I, I was a fan of teddy bridgewater and we went to the vikings and it was open to the public but the lines for just like to get in to see this person work out to see you know to get autographs at the time that's just dangerous when they open it to the public because yeah. i would say minnesota probably has a, a you know a pretty decent fan base especially yeah. again in the midwest you're pulling people from iowa and nebraska up to up to minnesota so uh i love training camps but you you said not a lot of teams have open to the like open free from whatever for what i remember i don't think there's a ton that like the entirety of camp is open to the public. Oh, got you. Like, I think most of them have like a week or so that's like, okay, you guys can come this week. But the Panthers, the whole thing is open to the public until it gets moved to the stadium. Yep. They they train at Wofford College, which is actually like 30 minutes away from the stadium. Yep. Um, and that facility is where they do like a month long open to the public. And so like the first three weeks, if you go, you can go like on a Tuesday. And go see their Tuesday practice. And there's, like, nobody there. Like, no fans because it's a Tuesday at, like, 11 a.m. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's super cool. So, like, it's kind of – it's really personal. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up going on a Friday evening when school was out. So, <clears throat> it was slammed. But me and my buddy, we went and we got actually super early. And we ended up being the front row when the where the running backs were. CMC. So, we got to see CMC, and then we got to see Sam Darnold do the running back drills. And it was the most unathletic thing I've ever seen in my life. It was awesome. I I love rookie like mini camp and like just training in general. It's it's always very fun to see like the guys who make the roster and the guys who can clearly are seeing are not gonna make the roster. Yeah. Again, it's it's a fun time, but just not much you can take away from it. I feel like right yeah. now is just a time of getting everybody back into the routine of things. Yeah. And there, there's going to be some guys that are going to struggle and there's going to be some guys that look, you know, super sharp. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sharp and, and ready for the season. And it's uh, been that way and for then the, a lot of time. Yeah. Y- yes. But then, you know, then when the season actually hits, it could be the complete opposite. The guy struggling in, in OTAs and in training camp can turn it on in the actual season. The guy that was killing, OTAs and training camp can struggle and, you know, be off to a rough start. And, uh, you know, the, the player that I would say has probably made the most headlines with all of this going on right now for football is, is Caleb Williams, the first overall pick for the Chicago bears quarterback out of USC, uh, a generational guy as reporters have talked about. Uh, and in these first couple of days, one of these instances that we've just talked about, Caleb Williams has looked actually terrible. Um, I saw at one point he got benched, got pulled to the side. Uh, I read an article how Kevin Byard, uh, who just joined the Bears, he was a vet, uh, safety, uh, pulled Caleb Williams aside, spoke to him, gave him some advice. He threw how many interceptions has he thrown? Seven. Well, that one in day like, he throws. In that one day, he threw seven. Yeah, he threw seven. And this was on this was like seven on seven drills, I think mm-hmm. I saw. And he was throwing I think they said he completed like I don't know if it was one one, one pass. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a so drag. You're thinking yeah, and when you're yeah, and that's what I saw. A lot of his completions that he was making throughout the, the days were like check downs. Yeah. And like screens and drag routes. So when you're hearing that about for a first overall pick, a quarterback that separated himself completely from every other quarterback in the draft uh there's probably some things to be concerned about but you know what can you really take away from this and i know this has been talked about uh with a lot of quarterbacks who have struggled early on in their career and uh one of them is a guy named patrick mahomes yeah i mean i remember those reports too just like this kid why did they draft him they traded up for him he looks awful this that and the third and 
he, now he's multiple time Super Bowl win, winner, multiple time MVP, probably one of the greatest quarterbacks of at least my generation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, has a ch- has a chance to win three straight Super Bowls. Like, yeah, so, I I think Caleb Williams will be fine. Caleb, do you think Caleb Williams will be fine? I hope so. I like him. Uh, he's got a different personality to him that the new generation of athlete. I, I think he'll be fine. I I will stick to it. I think out of the top three quarterbacks that got drafted, out of the top four, it's going to be JJ McCarthy and Drake made that struggle. Um. And one, I don't think I, I just hate Jake McCarthy or, uh, what's his name? Oh, J- shit, JJ McCarthy. JJ, I was. No, we're not having another Solier. Solier moment again. Solier moment again. No, did I just say Jake McCarthy? Oh my goodness, Jake McCarthy's a baseball player, right? Yeah. All right. Well, JJ McCarthy. I just hate him. Let me take a deep breath. I just hate JJ McCarthy. Uh, I don't think he's going to, and I've heard also he's struggled um, to yeah. begin camps. I just don't think he's going to be good. I I never thought he's going to be a good professional quarterback. And then for Drake May, Drake May is not going to be good because I think what he currently has on the Patriots right now, he could be good, but hopefully they build around him and take the time and spend the money to, to get him some weapons. Cause He's currently growing right now with a wide receiver core of a bunch of rookies and second year dudes. Yeah, they have no true vet at all on that team. It feels like. Is, is Juju still there? Yeah, but is he really a vet leader? Yes. Yeah, I just remember when he was at the height of his career and he was getting torched for all the TikTok dances, and then he fell off the fell off Earth. Yeah, as soon as he left the Steelers, he was. Dunzo. Yeah. Dunzo. So we'll 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 keep our eye on on football. Hopefully it's going to pick up sooner and quicker than we you know than we think. It's already almost June. And then you know June, July fly by, and then we're pretty much only focusing on 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 football and then postseason baseball. So we'll keep an eye on that and uh let's just transition to back to baseball. And Caleb, we record we're recording this on on Sunday, and some unfortunate news just happened before we uh, started recording this episode, and it unfortunately is with your uh, Atlanta Braves. Yeah, it's uh, it's sad to see. He uh, Acuna went down with a with a knee injury in the first inning, and he uh was just put on a um, 10 day uh, injured list and they interviewed him and they spoke to him and he said he had feelings of when he uh, was injured in 2018. So hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he's okay. Um, But when you, when you see that, especially when baseball is going to start picking up, uh, I hope he's okay. He's a young star. He's a piece that the Braves need. Um, and with that, without a guy like Ronald Acuna, that dude's a, a game changer, a season changer, a franchise changer. And if he continues to have these tweaks and injuries, uh, especially with the ACL, and you know, that's just not a good injury to have when you're an outfielder uh, and an explosive hitter. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, 70, 40 last year, I believe it was. I can't remember off the top of my head, but like 70 stolen bases, torn ACL is not what you, that's not how you keep that pace up. I I think he'll be fine. From what I'm hearing, there's other reports that he's like the one putting out that it's a torn ACL. There's no official word on what it is yet. Um, So I'm trying to be optimistic, but Hopefully, it's just, you know, maybe a month, something sprained or maybe slightly torn so it's not a complete tear, be back for the postseason maybe. Something like that would be is what I'm hoping for with him. Yes, because it was a non-contact injury. I, th- I believe he was on the base path, right? Yeah. I don't know if he was st- stealing, trying to steal a bag or advancing, uh, but he started to take off and then he went down. 
and it just did not it just didn't look good for him a star of the league something to keep an eye on hopefully like you said Caleb hopefully he's all right uh because you never no matter what team it is whether you love him or you hate him you don't want to see injuries like that especially ones that keep reoccurring exactly Uh, but another guy that you love he's not injured and we both love him and he is uh he's killing it yes shota imanaga yep he is absolutely nasty bro he's not striking guys out but this guy sub 1 era what 5 and 0 oh? 5 and 0 oh. 0.84 ERA doesn't get a lot of strikeouts. He only has 58 strikeouts on 53 and two third innings. So it's, I mean, a bright spot for the Cubs. They have Javier Assad, who's also pitching very well. Mm-hmm. But Sh- Shota, he's got such a class to him as well. I, I know we've talked about it before. He'll get a ball from the ump and he'll walk up to the top of the mound and and then he'll head. pitch again. I love he'll bow to he'll bow to the ump. He he seems like the guy that if you have like a, a long line of thirty people, he will hold the door and wait for every person to go in before he enters. Yes. He just seems like an individual. He will pull out your chair for you. He will shake your hand. And uh, there's a picture of uh, Camilo Cardoso and uh, Angel Reese. They are now with the Chicago Sky for the WNBA, and they came and took a picture of him. And he was just like, and he didn't put his hands on him. He was just yeah. like very hands, awkward. Like, he's like super. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Super awkward individual, but he's been killing it. And a, definitely a rookie of the year, potentially Cy Young. I yeah, mean, I don't know how you don't win rookie of the year if he maintains this. There's yes. no way he can maintain this. In my I, opinion. I mean, I wouldn't. I would love that he does. I, I would hear me out. It'd be awesome, but I don't know if that's possible. Yeah. So that's just something that we've talked about. And uh Shota, he he's just a good guy. So if you if you haven't seen him pitch or play, um he's just definitely somebody figure out the next time he's pitching and uh go watch him because just the way he holds himself, his character and his tremendous skill yes. are, are something that are that's catching the league by storm and, and kind of taking over. So um shout out, shout out Shota, man. He yes. he's a great guy. He is absolutely legit. I'm very excited to see how his season turns out. I think he'll be an ace for a very long time. He's not very old either, coming in from Japan. I believe he's mm-hmm. still like mid twenties. I can't wait for the kid next year to come in from Japan. Roki, oh yeah, Roki is it Sakai, Sasuke, Sasuke, Saki, Sasuke? I think it is. Yes, I, I, so, uh, one of those things. I, I know Roki is the first name. He yes. is legit, and I believe he's only twenty. And is he just a pitcher? Or is he a two way? He's a pitcher, just a pitcher. He's just a pitcher. Yes. If you land, I mean, there's obviously a lot of international prospects that uh, you miss out on. But when you get a guy like Shohei Otani, uh, and I, I hopefully this is not too early, but Imanaga, I mean, these guys are difference changers. And they always come with so much class. Uh, probably bad timing for everything we've seen with Otani but, uh, nowadays. But they just, they, they are different. They're different changers uh franchise changers and uh the cubs got a gem in, in shota so i agree well like we said basketball there's not really much to talk about right now Porch is not very invested in into it but we'll, we'll still kind of highlight it here quick um the celtics are up on the pacers three nothing Halliburton is dealing with injuries he didn't play in game three uh Every night it seems like it's either Tatum or Jalen Brown, and they're just torching. I know game three, uh, Tatum had, I think, 36 and 10. He just killed the competition. He's, yeah. again, uh, just one of the best players in the league. And when you don't have Halliburton, the Pacers are in trouble. But it, they actually kept it close. I think they only lost by a basket or or, or two. So, uh, But the Celtics look like they're going to wrap up that series and maybe even get a sweep in gate with game four. 
and then uh, the Mavericks and the uh, Timberwolves. Um, it's two zero right now. The Mavericks look like they're could potentially just take this thing and maybe even uh, get a sweep for themselves as well. And Edwards has been very inconsistent. Uh, yes. His shooting has been atrocious and whether it's good or bad news, he said for game three, he's going to shoot more. <laughs> oh God. I love it, man. But I mean, if he comes out tonight and it's just like, you know, it's me and he drops like mm-hmm. 60 on like efficient shooting. I would love it. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious. I I also think uh, it would it would be, you know because he's the type of guy that you'd probably do want to speak up and say like hey I'll I'll take this like I'm gonna be the leader I'm gonna I'm gonna change uh, the direction of this series and and potentially uh, get us back into this thing so that that's the right mindset for him to have but the way he has been shooting it's probably you know he should just probably focus on maybe other ways to to change the game get some easy baskets instead of just calling your number every possession uh, because he has good pieces around him and they've shown that throughout other series of the playoffs this year. And they just need to figure things out because Luke and Kyrie are no joke. Derek Lively's no joke. And that team just has depth for days with, with Gafford and Washington jr. Um, Olivier so, Prosper. Prosper. Yes. And then they have uh, Derek Jones, who's been, crushing it for them in a, in a in a role that he might not receive on any other team so exactly exactly but ba- you know basketball's just at a point right now we'll probably talk more into at the finals but uh the playoffs right now just don't seem very interesting to me and uh i know with caleb feels the same way so we'll we'll kind of just throw in tidbits here and there about kind of how the series are going but until we finally have a champion or, or, or whatnot or any crazy super big news, uh, we probably won't talk about much. Maybe the free agency in the draft, that's probably where we'll, we'll have a lot of coverage for um, the NBA. So, yep. So, we're going to do this game. I'm very excited. Can you, you want to explain the rules of the game? Yeah. So, uh, I guess this week, so Friday of this week that we're recording uh, was my golden birthday. And we did a draft last week, and I and I thought it went pretty well, and we had some fun with it. So uh, I was like, hey, you know, it was my it was my birthday, it was my golden birthday, so let's do a draft, a color or a color draft uh, of everything gold. So we have we have five picks, and we instead of kind of just doing all like anything you want, we have certain categories. So we have food, uh, sport animal and then two wild cards because i couldn't think of any other categories that had a lot of gold uh items or things or people or places so so we're going to do a draft and they're going to be in no order so if you like your uh, animal pick and you think that's going to be picked by the other person first you can go with the animal route and then you can go to sport then you can use a wild card uh whatever whatever that may be um and you can kind of pick in that order. So uh, I don't know how you want to determine this. Um, it's your birthday. You go first. All right. So with my first pick, and I have my computer over here. So with my first pick, I got to go animal because I felt like there weren't a lot of animal options. So I'm going with the classic. And this is not really a meat, like not an animal that I enjoy. Uh, if you know me, I don't like a lot of animals, but I feel like this might get a lot of uh from like our crowd but the golden retriever ah. uh, uh that's just like the go-to animal uh for me and it's cute yeah fluffy uh, you know a best man's friend and just a, a just a in in general a person's friend the golden retriever is like one of those classic dogs that are known mm. for being smart playful fun and uh, a good piece to have in your home when you grow up. So it's Airbud. Was it Airbud a golden retriever? I think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'll go animal as well. I went with the lion. Oof. Okay. The big mane, you know, just us alphas, we really, you know, we can relate to an a lion more than most people. Did you just consider yourself an alpha? Amen. You picked a dog. 
I picked L-I-N. We're not the same. Because I'm a dog. D-A-W-G. You just said, I got... No, I don't, I don't think anybody's referred to as a golden retriever as a T-A-W-G type dog. You're a glorified cat. Yeah, it would F up your Meow. golden retriever. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it on the podcast here, but what's another word for a cat? Exactly. Mm. So remember, I'm the alpha, I'm a dog, and you're the beta, and you're a little glorified cat. Mm. We'll talk about so that. with my <laughs> so with my second pick. Ah uh, I'll go with food. You can't beat a golden cut French fry, crispy French fry. Mm. That's that just makes every meal better. It's a one of the best sides out there. Just the potato in general is the best side for every dish. Every dish besides probably like pasta, you can have a potato with. And but the but the golden cut crispy fry, man. I uh I'll take the fry any day. That's that's one of my favorite foods as well. Yeah, I had fry on my list, so you snagged it from me. Stolen. But for sports, I'm gonna go with sports next. Ugh. Add the golden glove. Ooh, okay. You didn't go the route I, I thought it was gonna. You were gonna. I, go. I feel like that's a pretty good, you know, prestigious award for baseball. Mm. A lot of good, all the great defenders get the golden glove award. Feel like it fit with the category pretty well. Yeah, and, and I'll stay with with sport here, and I guess that probably leaves. Uh, you have what food left, and then two wild cards. Yeah. Uh, so we'll leave the wild cards to the end, I guess. But I'll stick with sport, and I'm debating on one or the other. But I'm gonna go with the UFC, UFC gold man, the UFC mm-hmm. belt. Um, it was either that or the Olympic gold medal. Oh, uh, gold that's, medal. A, that's a good one. Yeah. But I just went with the UFC one because I'm a bigger UFC fan than the Olympics. And the list of of champions in the UFC uh, that have reached gold, that have reached the top of the mountain, they are some of the most entertaining uh, individuals. Because, like, for for me, like, when I think of, like, the gold glove, you know, you might have a guy that might just have one crazy year and then you never really hear about him again. He gets a gold glove and then, you know. Yeah. But for the UFC, it is so hard to be champion. It is so hard to reach gold. And I feel like when you get the like the belt, you put yourself into a category that distance yourself, separates yourself from That's all of the thing. other fighters on the on the roster. And it's so like, I mean, look at the bantamweight division right now. What Sean O'Malley's doing, he's in one of the toughest divisions in all of the UFC. And be, to be able to reach, uh, to get gold in that division is you know a crazy task it is one of the the, just from the grapplers the strikers the complete fighters in that division to be able to reach the ufc gold that's a massive accomplishment so with my uh sport category i'm going to take the ufc gold the ufc belt nice my next one was food i went with mac and cheese i like mac and cheese you know it's a good the velveta gold you get the baked mac and cheese all the different gimmicky types of mac and cheese now. I'm not a big fan of those. Just traditional mac and cheese, one of my favorite dishes. I feel like it was a pretty – French fries was my first option, so mac and cheese was a reserve, but it's not a bad second choice in my opinion. I'm going to judge you. Do you like breadcrumbs on your mac and cheese? No, sir. Okay, good. That's Do you like breadcrumbs on their mac and cheese? It's disgusting. I like I like a baked mac and cheese, but it's got like a crispy top. But it's not. Oh, because, yeah, it's not because of breadcrumbs. It's because it's just a cheese on top. Like when I go to like when I was back in high school, when I would go to like graduation parties, I would always look forward to like the the food. Obviously, yeah. Uh, you know, there's nothing like getting like a, a pulled pork sandwich or whatever it is, and then having some mac and cheese on the side. And if they had breadcrumbs, no. Nah. I'm passing. I'm passing on the side, and it's unfortunate because you're ruining a beautiful dish. Yeah, mac and cheese is top tier. Mac and cheese is is beautiful. And have you ever had mac and cheese from Chick Fil A? Maybe once or twice. Everybody says it's good. I've never had it. I don't I, trust. Uh... <laughs> so everybody does say it's really good. In my opinion, it's very mediocre. 
I've not yeah, ever had it where like you know normally I don't go to Chick Fil A very often. I have it delivered. Mm-hmm. It's never fresh, so maybe that's why. Like it's it's not hot, but it's not cold. It's just kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's I why I don't. Skew that's it. why I would never. Yeah, that's why I would never have it. I don't trust like fast food. Also, I'm not a fast food guy, but like I wouldn't trust fast food mac and cheese. That just screams dangerous. If I were to do it though, it's Chick Fil A. To be fair. Oh. Oh yeah, if it, if I was gonna trust any fast food restaurants, probably them or like uh, a Culver's, and Culver's doesn't have mac and cheese. So yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, your wild card, sir. My wild card. Oof. You know, I I didn't want to choose like the golden coin or like jewelry or like that's just like a lame like a lame pick. Yeah, and I, and I my goal of this draft is to crush you. So my other. My wild card, I'm going to go back to the food category. I, went, I don't know if this is a food. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a food, but honey. Oh. There's nothing like honey. I I hate honey, but I feel like honey is just like, you know, there's nothing like honey. You can just put honey on, like all those healthy people eat honey. And uh, I feel like it's something that you can probably mix in, put it put with a lot of things. I know my Milk grandpa shakes. every, yeah, I know my grandpa every morning when he wakes up, he like puts together this contraption of like oats and honey and like raspberries and oh bunch oatmeal, of oatmeal basically. Uh, yes, but it's like oatmeal and crack. He like puts like a bunch of just crazy like healthy. He puts his like greens into it and just like mixes it all up and then just eats it. All right, but but that dude's been in the military that dude i feel like that dude just doesn't feel pain anymore he also i'm pretty he fell off a ladder once and like he's still walking around and like <laughs> doesn't feel a thing so that's crazy you know honestly he's a guy that just probably doesn't complain much so it could honestly taste horribly but he wouldn't say anything so i will say honey hot honey chicken fire i have had the i've had i have had that other than that i don't think i've ever put honey on anything else hot honey chicken is fire my next pick is also semi food related. Golden apples from Minecraft. What? Yeah, you didn't a, see that. You hadn't seen what's that. What's a golden coming, apple? Dude. It's like the best. The... It's like the best regenerative health thing in Minecraft. It's like the top tier thing. What does it do? It gives you health and like speed and all types of stuff in Minecraft. It's like the number one item in Minecraft. When I play that, you're, you're a nerd. Yeah, golden apples in Minecraft. You did not see that one coming. You can't. No, because I, I don't know what it is. You you literally have played Minecraft with me, and we've used this item. I always be eating the raw pork and chicken. <laughs> well, next time we play, I'll show you a golden apple. Nothing beats a nice piece of <laughs> raw chicken. Yeah, then you get salmonella or whatever the poisoning is in the game. <laughs> then I start losing health quickly, and I say, Caleb, yeah. Caleb, Caleb, help me, because I don't know what I'm doing in Minecraft. Yes, Kane is the, the worst Minecraft player I've ever played with in my life. I will probably, I will take that, uh, I will take that honor and uh, <laughs> agree with it, because because I hate Minecraft. <laughs> so my last pick, rounding it out. And again, this is something I don't consume or prefer or like, but Modelo. No way you went Modelo. Modelo's gold, right? I think. I like, it looks gold. I looked up a picture. It looks gold. I feel like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what our audience is out there, but if they're big drinkers, they might like this pick and. Hey man, Modelo. I've never had a Modelo. Is it Modelo? Also... Do you put do you put a lime with Modelo? I thought lime was Corona. Oh shit. <laughs> that just shows you how much I know about alcohol. I, I also don't know. I don't I'm allergic to alcohol. So I But then yeah. also I can I constantly hear Modelo on uh US, in UFC fights because it's a proud sponsor of Modelo. Blah, blah, blah. Get your Modelo today at your local so... high V. That was a pretty good impersonation. I <laughs> like the, the announcement guy. Well, yes, Modelo. That's all. That, I mean, that's 
that's the first thing that came to my mind. Again, I could have gone with the golden coin or the golden bar. Or, that's just lame picks. Yeah, I thought so. about going chains, and I was like, eh. Yeah. There's a couple other things. I went, I, was... I went with Modelo. So you went alcohol, which is strange, because I also went alcohol. Did you go Corona? No. I went gold schlager. Do you know what gold schlager is, Canyon? <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I didn't know if you put a limer in a Modelo. I definitely know what gold schlager is. Gold schlager is like a cinnamon-based liqueur, but they put gold flakes in the bottle, and they stir it Wait. around in there. Pause, pause, pause. Is there a difference between liquor and liqueur? One sounds fancier, so I wanted to say that. I don't know. I hated that, but continue. There's gold in the gold in the bottle. Like, you drink the gold flakes, I think. That's not real. It's real. It's Goldschlager. Say it more and I might understand what Goldschlager is. It's also a terrible name. It's a great name. You're just hating on Goldschlager. Have you ever met somebody that's drank a Goldschlager? Not admittingly. Maybe they have. I'll get back to you on that. What what percentage of the United States consumes Goldschlager? Listen, I didn't do analytical data on the drink. I just said, I'm so, I remember that one. I'm saying less than 1%. I don't know. Some people probably buy it just for the gold, I, I imagine. No way they filter out the alcohol to get the gold. Stop it. I mean, I'm not saying that's not a thing people do. Did we just discover a secret hack to get infinite rich? Infinite money glitch. <laughs> buy all the gold schlager. Filter the alcohol out, take the gold, trade so, it in for money. Buy more gold schlager. The unlimited money glitch. Yes. I will say I wanted to mention one of my honorable mentions. With oh this gosh, what's that? For the sports category, for some reason when you presented this idea to me, all I could think about was Notre Dame helmets and the history behind Notre Dame and the all gold. Oh, that, that would have been cool. That was like – that was my – Behind Golden Glove was the history behind the Notre Dame helmets because they've always been all gold. Yeah, I was trying to think of other gold. Gold's just a weird color. I, I feel like, you know, if we did red, right, there's so many things we could have done with red. That would have been a – Go ahead. That would just that would have been a, a very competitive draft Yeah, with the amount of things you could use and whatnot. But with gold, I can only think of – a few things for each category and then that's why we had to have two wild cards because i couldn't think of any other big category that has multiple gold things you could have done the 49ers because they went over in the gold rush in 1949 that's how their team became about gold helmets their mascot could have done, like, done the golden birthday yeah the golden knights for hockey the golden knights for hockey my golden gorilla that's right here you do have a golden gorilla you should have done that. You would have. Yeah, I, would have I just, I just saw that in the frame, and I'm very sad that was not an honorable mention of mine. I would have given you the belt, the yeah. the championship belt here. You would have earned the gold. Yeah, I sh I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't have the golden gorilla on my board. That uh, golden gorilla has a lot of history. It's got too much history behind that golden gorilla. I mean, we're not going to dive into that today, but it'd be a whole podcast. Just know if that golden gorilla went missing, and if if you uh were the one to steal that golden gorilla, you have a prized possession in your hands. Yes, it's and pure gold. Caleb would find you. Caleb would pull Liam Neeson. He will find you, and he will get my gorilla rest. back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good draft. Well, that, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Yeah, I'm liking these drafts, uh, and it, you've probably noticed. The hot take thing, we got participation, but one we always forgot about it. <laughs> so the participation, the participation that we got, uh, it was the same couple people that I don't know if they had their notifications on or if they're on Instagram a lot, but I kept getting the same individuals. And the hot takes, when you're looking at, again, you got to separate the fun from the professionalism. And the hot takes that we were getting from, you know. A professional standpoint they just weren't good topics to really talk about and discuss so i was just like you know let's let's kind of change things up so we might do a draft every podcast um i mean it's it's more 
more of us interact, you know, more interaction between us. Because again, with the hot takes, you know, you can give your opinion on something and I don't have an opinion on it. And then it's like, you know, it's only Caleb talking for that, for that uh, point in the podcast. So yeah, uh, we might do the drafts for the back and forth and for the banter and the, the shit we give each other. But uh, so I don't think we're going to be doing hot takes moving forward uh, with the one trick ponies. It was something that it started out great, but then you can only give so many hot takes. And you only get so many hot takes from the same individual or the yeah. same couple of individuals. And then it's just like, all right, Caleb, you know, this person submitted five hot takes. Do we want to keep using his? Do we want to keep using hers? Is this a segment? Do we want to still have on the, on the episode anymore? And we kind of came to the conclusion that it was a no. So we're going to stick with the drafts. I like that. That was a good draft. And we'll kind of just, you know, if there's like, you know, for around the holidays, Christmas draft or the best Thanksgiving food draft. There's so many things you can do with drafts. Um, and, you know, that that's endless. That's endless. So uh, we'll, we'll keep doing that moving forward. And uh, I thought this was a pretty good episode. Um, again, sports just need to pick up in some sort of way, hopefully not for the, the worst, but for the better. And, you know, whether it's Shota Imanaga still crushing it. And, you know, at the end of the year, he finishes 20 and 0 and, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> 0.5 ERA, you know, something needs to happen. And, and like, again, though, baseball's heating up and football will, will start heating up. And then uh, the NBA, once we get to the finals and we have a champion, maybe we can more talk more about that. There's a lot of good storylines with the finals. You know, if Ann Edwards gets there, if Luca gets his first, if the Celtics complete, you know, do what was expected for them in this year's playoffs. There's a, there's a lot of good storylines we could talk about. And then obviously we all will have the NBA off season. So yep. that's a wrap to episode 10. Uh, I got to do this after every episode, like share, follow, subscribe. If you're, if you're a viewer on, on the podcast on YouTube, we would appreciate a subscription. I'm not going to beg for it. I'm not going to constantly ask for it, but, but that does help us just kind of builds our brand get, gets us out there more we're not really doing this for uh the the monetary benefit but uh it's something that we enjoy and the feedback that we get the uh the hate the love we get we love it all we appreciate it all um, but the one trick ponies on spotify instagram youtube and tiktok give us a follow give us a like give us a share give us a repost keep up the feedback um and uh with that, Caleb, do the honors, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, got him.